mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please be seated. So as we sit here in this holy place, in the presence of God, we pray together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we take a moment to consider how we have been this week with other people and how we've been with God. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate thoughts. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. So we join with our voices in the hymn of heaven, the angels will provide the music. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive that prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So as we stand, let us pray with this week's collect together. God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness. Increase your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our Bible readings. <laughs> the first reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 15. O oh Lord, you know, remember me, and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name. O oh Lord God of hosts, I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice under the weight of your hand. I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious, and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. 
It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing out honour. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for that which is noble in the sight of all. If it's possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Billy Connolly, one of my favourite comedians, once pointed out, why do we teach our kids that rain is bad weather? It rains all the time in this country and we call it bad. There's no such thing as bad weather, 
just the wrong clothing. <laughs> it's right, isn't it? Especially this, this August. <laughs> Today's Gospel reading is one of those key moments of teaching for Jesus as friends. Peter has just declared that Jesus is the Messiah and Jesus has confirmed this. Their excitement must have been palpable. What would they have been thinking? Well, remember that the disciples were Jews who were longing for the overthrow of the occupying Roman forces. They'd only known their lives as being controlled by Rome with a Roman soldier on every street corner who could easily bully you into carrying something for him for a mile at any given moment. Messiah to the disciples would mean Jesus was going to sort out Romans once and for all. From the point of Peter's declaration, Jesus begins to tell his friends that he will soon suffer at the hands of the chief priests and he will be handed over to the Romans to be killed and that he will rise again on the third day. Peter's reaction, understandably, is visceral. No, he says, this can't happen to you. Peter has a typical human response. He doesn't want to imagine that suffering will happen. Peter's declaration that Jesus is the Messiah is inspired by God. But Peter's statement this time elicits harsh words from Jesus. Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Last week, we listened to Paul's words to the Romans, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. In other words, repent. Jesus wants to show his friends a new way of looking at the world. He says to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Doesn't make much sense. Why would we want to take up a cross, that symbol of punishment and rejection and suffering? What the cross and Jesus teaches us is that suffering is a normal part of life. We resist it with every fibre of our being, but it is there. We've learnt this so much this year, haven't we? We, like Peter, scream at it, no, this can't be. Yet Jesus shows us another way, a way of renewing our minds, a way of repenting. Just as in the way we re view rain as bad weather, we need to take the view of Billy Connolly, there's no such thing as bad weather, just the wrong clothing. I watched a video this week from a researcher and scientist called Lucy Hone. She began her career working with American soldiers who'd come back from Afghanistan honing her advice and guidance with them as how to stay emotionally resilient in the same way as they stay physically fit. And then one day the worst thing happened to her. Her daughter and best friend died in a car accident. Her world fell apart and she had to learn how to respond. She finally had to put her own research into practice herself. In the course of her research, she came up with three habits of resilient people. Three things that resilient people do that help them keep, to keep going in the face of great suffering. And these are they. Number one, recognise that suffering is part of life. This is what Jesus is trying to get his disciples to do. It's not something we can ignore or wish away. It's no coincidence that the symbol of our faith is a cross, a symbol of suffering. If you are suffering, it simply means you are human. It is the norm. Everyone in this room right now is carrying some pain and suffering or has experienced it at some point in their life. People often think when bad things happen to them, why me? But really it should be why us? Why everyone? The second thing Lucy identifies uh, that resilient people do is to deliberately choose where you focus your attention. Jesus says, take up your cross, that is, recognise that suffering is part of being human, and follow me. Focus our attention on him. 
A bit like Peter walking on the water towards Jesus. He falls when his attention is on the wind and the waves and not on Jesus. Lucy Holmes says that those who are resilient are able in the midst of their suffering to tune in to the good, to hunt it out. I wonder what things you can be grateful for today. The third thing that Lucy Hone identifies that resilient people do is ask themselves, is what I'm doing helping or harming me? Is my response to this situation helping or harming me? It's quite an insightful question. It's the one that I find the most challenging in this. She describes how she found herself staying up late looking at old photos of her daughter and realising that it was harming rather than helping her. Am I helping or harming myself by cutting myself off from my friends, not talking to people? Do I really need that third glass of wine? As I listened to this, I realised the deep truth and wisdom of Jesus' teaching. What this researcher discovered has been the truth all along, but the human desire to blank out and ignore suffering is a strong trait. We are all like Peter, saying, no, this can't happen to you. Another researcher I was listening to this week also had something to add to this discussion, I think. Brene Brown researches the power of vulnerability and the importance of vulnerability if we want to live a courageous life. She also identifies the need to recognise that living a full life is going to involve pain and failure. In her research, Brene asked people what vulnerability is. And here are some of the answers she got. Vulnerability is the first date after my divorce. Vulnerability is sitting with my wife, who has stage 4 breast cancer, making plans for our young children. It's getting fired. It's firing someone. It's saying, I love you, first. Brene says that truly being vulnerable is a choice. She says that every day she has to say to herself, today I will choose courage over comfort. Perhaps another way of putting it could be, today I'll take up my cross and follow Jesus. I'm not going to pick the easy way. Brene says that vulnerability is the courage to show up when you don't know the outcome. A quotation that really inspired Brene is from Theodore Roosevelt. I never thought that I would quote him two weeks in a row in my sermon, but here it is. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Don't be the one standing on the sidelines, criticising those suffering in the arena. Be the one who dares to take up your cross and follow Jesus. And in doing so, we take up life in all its fullness, in all its messy reality. As Jesus says, those who want to save their life will lose it. Those who want to stay in the so-called safety of the arena seats jeering at those involved in the fight, will ultimately miss out on the adventure that is life. Those who take up their cross and follow Jesus will gain life, will know true life. Jesus says in John's Gospel, 
just before he goes to the cross. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Please would you stand as you are able as we declare our faith in the words of the creed. Remembering that we are saying these words alongside brothers and sisters all around the world. We believe in one God, God the Father who we are unto maker of heaven and earth, of all that is fleeting and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate on the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was laid down. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of our life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we come to pray. Lord Jesus, you shocked your disciples by making them face up to your cross and their own. Give to your church courage to emulate your sacrificial love. May we each find our true life in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord Jesus, you spoke of suffering at the hands of elders and community leaders. Give to all who lead due awareness of the awesome responsibility they hold. We pray for all governments who are trying to manage the pandemic. Pray for wisdom for those in authority. We continue to pray for the work on a vaccine against COVID-19. And we pray especially today for all of our local schools and their children and staff as they prepare to return. May we never confuse kingdoms of this world with your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, Peter struggled to accept the danger and purpose of your actions. Be with all who are anxious for a loved one, whose job places them in grave danger. We pray for all who are key workers. We pray for those who work in the NHS, for those we rely on, like our bin men, those who work in supermarkets, those who are exposed more than most to the dangers of COVID-19. Give us grace to overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
Lord Jesus, you are with us as we stand staring into the darkness. Preserve us all in our sufferings. In a moment's quiet, we bring before God those things on our hearts, the things that we're finding difficult, the people that we're concerned for. And we pray by name for Wyatt and Garrett Ruthven, Barbara Needham, Veronica Blackwell, Margaret Gilmore, Luke Firth, Sandra Mella, Chloe Parks, Betty Wood, George Naylor, Elizabeth Hamilton, Robert Verity, Lily Wood, Michelle Jenkins, Audrey Wilkinson, and Jackie Burns. Grant us compassion to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you hold open the door to eternity. Strengthen all who stand on its threshold in faith and fear. And we remember those who have recently died. John Y. Brown, Thomas Edward North, Pam Rundle, Peter White, Baby Walter Lockwood, Reverend David Hull and Bill Rack. We will one day rejoice together in your hope. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a socially distanced peace <laughs> by waving, <laughs> greeting one another, <laughs> saying hello. <laughs> Please stand. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside and now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so Lord may your whole church soon be gathered from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is your right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to the saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, according to mind, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. James, St. John the Baptist and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So looking for the coming of his kingdom, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until the day he comes. Jesus, now the Lord, have a mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, the Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Christ broken for us, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us, keep us in eternal life. Amen. 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 <coughs> As we turn off the communion, if you follow the markings on the floor, if you would prefer a blessing, please bring your order of service with me.
family this week taking a little bit of a break which has been quite a month actually from a ministry point of view um, so i'll be away from tuesday to friday um, but i'll be back for the service obviously next sunday so that means that there won't be a service on facebook on tuesday but the phone church service will still take place on thursday morning and that will be led by reverend adrian Molinesi. please would you stand the Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads to receive God's blessing. May God give you grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth, and too small for anything but love. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.